Hey guys, it's George here from menknitting.net and I just wanted to give a little bit of a mini podcast, if I may, after my weekend in um, Sydney. So, it has been a huge week. As you remember from the last time that we chatted, um, that was with the amazing Nathan Taylor. So, Nathan was doing some classes here in Australia as well as New Zealand. So, unfortunately the classes in Melbourne did not bode well with my work here. So, thankfully, the wonderful people at Skane Sisters in Sydney were having classes across the weekend. So, I was able to fly up to Sydney, catch up with my loved ones, and do some amazing classes. And it was really, really fun. So it started on the Friday night and that was with a men's knitting group. And that was really, really cool. It's nice to have a group of guys. I think it was about probably, I think it was about 15 guys in total actually, all knitting, all at different stages of their knitting journey. Um, and it was just really fun. Good food, cheese, wine. Um, I don't actually drink, but I enjoy people who drink. Um, so yeah, we were just really relaxed and chatting. And what I really, really liked, so I've never been to Skein Sisters before, and it's got the best environment. When you go in, it feels warm, you know, and I know that sounds weird, but you go into some yarn stores and the vibe is cold, right? Which is kind of ironic when you think this is a yarn store where everything's warm and loving and wraps around you. So to be in this environment, which was really warm and welcoming was just fantastic. And there was, there's yarn everywhere, right? And some really great books. Um, and, um, there's a whole couch area that is set up where you can just relax and start knitting and, and you know, the staff were fantastic and I got to meet Deb. Um, now, Deb first came to my attention because she uh, runs a continental knitting class. Now, I've kind of only just gotten into continental over the past, say, four months and I'm still getting my, my um, positions and, you know, rhythm into it. But man, she is a Demon, check out this little snippet of video. Um, I know, right? Look at those fingers fly. It is absolutely incredible. So anyway, Deb had a class last week. I really wanted to go, but it was like, I cannot really justify flying to Sydney two weekends in a row. Um, and I, I, I let Deb know this and she was going, good. Come sit with me, sit beside the couch. And she sat me down and she just went through hand positioning, yarn management. And that was what I needed. That was the, the step that I needed to be able to get a really nice rhythm. And I haven't perfected it yet. And I must admit, I don't know, does, do, do other people get this? I've actually got a yarn burn on my finger, you can, oh, there it is. You can just see there's this one little bit where the, the yarn's been rubbing through that one spot. So I'm, I'm, I'm moving it around and actually going to some throwing for purlings just so I get that. Don't keep on killing that one little bit of skin. But kudos to Deb, beautiful classes, beautiful environment, and she's just so welcoming as are all of the staff there. So that was a really, really fun night and a great chance to meet up with fellow knitters in Sydney. And I really, really enjoyed it. So perfect start to the weekend. So the next day was the, I did the double knitting classes with Nathan. Now I first discovered double knitting in a really good color book one moment. I'm just, I'm just going to go grab that book. Sorry about that brief interruption. Um, but I wanted to get this book called Mad Colour. Um, I picked this up in Loop in London actually. Um, but this was the book that introduced me to double knitting, right? Um, and I thought, wow, that sounds really, really amazing and very complex. So I was like, mm. and it's really weird. I, I just started chatting to people and everybody said, oh, you should, you should, talk with Nathan. Um, 
And other people were saying, hey, there's this guy called the soccer magician. You should talk with him. And I was like, hmm, okay. Then a friend of mine said, you really need to talk with Nathan. He's coming to Australia. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm getting the hint, universe. Um, so yeah, um, there I was sitting in the double knitting class. And I have to say, if you get an opportunity to learn off Nathan, I highly recommend it. He is a very patient, <laughs> incredibly patient teacher, but he is also, he gets down to the nitty gritty, really into the, to the mechanics of how it works. And for my brain, that's, that's perfect. Um, and yet he's still able for, for, you know, if there were some old lags in the room who'd been knitting for the past 60, 70 years in their own style. And he was able to accommodate the way that they learnt as well. So the double knitting was, a really good skill. So as part of the class, we had um, we had to make a little swatch and this was my swatch, a P. Um, yes, I haven't done my tails yet, I apologize. But look, beautiful and totally reversible. And what I really like is that this is a super, super dense fabric, right? So it's really, really thick. So for a scarf or a cowl or something really nice like that, it's gonna be a fantastic um, option for me. So very excited about learning the basics. So in the first class, the you know um, basic uh, double knitting or in introduction to, I can't remember what the name is. Anyway, you, you will leave that class being able to make beautiful flat, fabrics, um, scarves and, and, you know, squares and rectangles and all that sort of stuff. The next class is where shaping comes in. And this is where Nathan really comes into his element and the nerd comes out. His hashtag is knit nerdism, where he talks about how stitches sit with each other, how stitches sit on the needle, how moving stitches in one direction to another may change the orientation of a stitch or even twist a stitch. Um, and that that's kind of important because if you're going to be doing shaping in double knitting, you really need to know what you're doing and then to be able to reverse it and do the exact opposite. Um, sounds hard, but again, the class was very well paced and it, I was able to pick this up and that's despite I'd never done double knitting before and I was able to learn some shaping um, at the end of the class and the good handouts and so I have the information that I will be able to work with to continue with my learning. So how am I going to continue with my learning? I'm glad you asked. I am excited. I've purchased the, um, the pattern Slideways which is a really lovely um, scarf. Of, picture up now and I have chosen some lovely yarn I have gone for silver and gold and these two together are, are going to be quite delightful um, and this is beautiful beautiful DK um, vivacious DK I will tell you now from fiber plates um, and this is merino. It's going to be really, really lovely and warm. Um, and slideways is a really, it, it's an easy pattern because it's got your, your nice blocks of double knitting and it also has increases and decreases, um, once every second row. And it's only one increase and one decrease. So that's a good learning double knitting plan for me. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm starting this on my flight in, um, I'm off to America. I'm off to America in, in three days. So this will be on, this will be my project for the plane. Um, after that, um, we had a lovely dinner and it was really wonderful. I think it was like 50 various people knitting. Now, caveats here. I was in the classes. I was the only male knitter other than, um, Nathan and, um, at the dinner, there was me and another bloke plus Nathan as the males of the group. So it's kind of an interesting thing. Let's get this gender balance going, people. If you're finding out about, see the guys at the men's knitting group, they didn't know that the classes were going on. It's like, I will do my best to promote 
fantastic teachers who are coming to Australia and let you guys know. So please, if you know somebody is coming who is fantastic, please let me know and I will make sure that I include them in this podcast because one, I want to meet them and two, I want to go to their classes because I want to learn as much as I can because I'm really getting so much from this craft. So next class was Strandasia, Strandasia, a mix of two words like stranded, color knitting, and intarsia, and they bring them together for strantasia. So if you are knitting in the round, the issue with doing stranded knitting can be, if you're just wanting to put a little icon somewhere inside there, when you do your first round, that's great, and it'll look fantastic. Except when you get round to the second round, the yarn's on the wrong end, and you can cut and you can move back, or you can use the, um, the, the, the tricks that Nathan teaches. And it's, it's actually very straightforward um, and fun because you get to do additional skills that you've probably never done before. If you have never knitted backwards, this is the time for you to learn to knit backwards. And it's actually fun and a little bit of knit nerdism goes a long way and you'll be able to pick that up. So I have actually never ever done Intarsia in my life. Um, I've never knitted with two colors. Um, so I was really, I was really grateful one that, that Nathan was willing to teach me because I was sort of thinking, mm, you know, sitting in the corner with a dunce hat on. But again, he accommodated to everybody in the room's needs, including mine, which was a little bit special ed. Um, but I did well. Look, here's my swatch. Believe it or not, this is a snowflake. Um, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one because my tension is absolutely crap. But again, knitted, this was knitted in the round and to quote a certain knitting teacher, I'll show, I'm even willing to show you my backside. So there you go. Um, again, really great class, really great, great class. And of course, as is the danger of when you attend classes in a fantastic knitting store, you, there is a tendency to get a little bit excited um, and with good reasons though, because Nathan has launched his beautiful, beautiful yarns um, and I managed to get some yarns. I wasn't able to get, they come in gray or a, a very light uh, pale gray, black um, and then the rainbow colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. However, you'll notice that they're, they're not bright. Um, and the lighting on this actually shows this up as a lot brighter. I'm just looking, thinking, it's actually a much more muted, more deeper, richer color. And the way that it, it has been dyed, it's not a, you know, there's, it's all the same hue, however, it's the, the amount of hue that varies from 80% to 100%. So you've got this slightly mild effect where you've got different densities of color. And it's really, really nice, lovely and squidgy. Merino wool, um, a tiny bit of nylon and possum from New Zealand, which is very, very interesting. Um, so I'm going to be um, knitting up one of Nathan's patterns to this yarn but I do have to get a few additional balls because unfortunately it was hugely popular and I wasn't able to get blue and I wanted to be able to do the full rainbow flag effect so um, I'm just gonna um, I'll be patient and this will be project number three or four in my queue of projects first one being slideways um, of course there was other really very lovely yarn in the store and it's Christmas is not too far away. So I got this beautiful blue and purple yarn, um, which I'm going to do the haiku shawl. Um, you can look it up on Ravelry um, by Johanna. Um, I can't think of her last name, but I'll put, I'll put a link up and I'm going to do the haiku shawl in these two colors, which I think is just going to be stunning. And 
if my um, stepmom is watching this, surprise! If you're not watching it, then it will be a surprise. Um, but I, you know, I haven't shown the pattern or anything like that. So there you go. Um, only other sort of other interesting stuff that I got while I was in store is um, I'm really interested in planned pooling. So I got two of these um, skeins of pooling yarn. So the blues, which I really, really like. I like blues and purples and stuff. Um, and these browns and blacks and creams. I think that's gonna be very interesting as well. Um, I haven't fully worked out what I'm gonna create with those yet, but ship ahoy, there's lots of stuff going on. Um, so yeah, there you go, that was the weekend. So I, I suppose the dot points are, thank you to um, Skein Sisters in Sydney. You are amazing, Deb run a fantastic shop and I really appreciate the time that you gave me to, um, you know, add some skills to my, um, my knitting. Thank you. Um, also, um, if you get a chance to attend one of Nathan's classes, I highly, highly recommend it. For people in San Francisco, Nathan is heading over for Vogue Knitting, Vogue Knitting Live, which I believe is at the Hilton. Um, so if you can get into one of his classes, highly, highly recommended. And San Francisco people, I'm actually going to be in San Francisco next week. Um, my partner and I are teaching at the Folsom um, event and it's not knitting. It's actually um, BDSM and some BDSM safety stuff. So if that's of interest to you, check out the Leatherman's speaking group. Um, we are presenting to the youth group as well as the, 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 the main Leathermen's group on Tuesday night and Wednesday night. And that is in the, the teaching space that's above Mr. S Leather on 8th Street. So really, really looking forward to that. And also to check out um, Folsom San Francisco because I've never, I've never been. So um, if you've got any suggestions for stores in San Francisco, I would be very appreciative. Thank you. Um, there's, is it Instanits or something like that? that? There's one store that just seems amazing, but I'm open to suggestions and they're very gratefully accepted as well. So, um, only other thing that I want to share is my current work in progress. This is a pair of the Stephen West, um, Stephen West sports shorts. And I'm really excited today because I closed the first leg. Um, and I reckon I will have these finished in a day or so, which is going to be great because I'm gifting them also on the weekend when I'm in Portland. So all the, any of my Portland people there, I would love to say hello as well. And any, again, any suggestions on stores in those areas, I'd be very, very appreciative. So there you go. Um, I had an amazing weekend. I've been really, absolutely dunked, dipped, drowned in, in all sorts of fun, new, nerdy, nitty techniques. And I'm looking forward to being able to share them as well. So have a fant, oh, sorry about that. Have a fantastic week. And I look forward to catching up with you at the next time. I might have to do a little video when I'm in San Francisco. Have a great one. See you guys.